Okay, so I have here my selection sort pseudo or my selection sort code, right? With a couple comments added that are horrible, <laughs> right? And then I wanted to make a bubble sort version of this. So I added this method void bubble sort step parentheses. Yeah, what's that doing? What is that thing? It's a method called bubble sort step that what? Passes nothing back, right? That's the no return, right? That's void. That's the return type here. And then it What's in the parentheses? It's not passing. Nothing. It's not taking any inputs, right? So when I call that, I don't need to pass it anything. And so up here in my in my draw method, I'm right now calling the selection sort step, right? You guys see that? So I'm going to comment that out. And instead, I'm going to call bubble sort step. Passing nothing. And now, what do I expect this to do? Just right now. If I push go on this. What do I expect it to do? Um, kind of. Let's see. So if I go look at my draw method, right? I've got backgrounding. I've got, oh, it's calling the display values method. Which if you recall how this worked, right? This thing was creating an array of integers and then drawing a bunch of rectangles, right? That's what that display values thing was. So I expect this to do at least the drawing rectangle stuff. I just don't expect it to sort anything because my bubble sort step method doesn't have anything in it, right? So I expect this to draw those rectangles and then loop through drawing those rectangles 60 times, oh, four times a second. That's my frame rate's four. Rectangles. Oh, and I have this green thing in my display values method, right? You guys remember that? I'm just going to leave that there and we'll see what it does. I don't know what that's going to do because that was coded basically for the selection start, uh, selection sort, right? Let's see if it's enlightening. Who knows? Maybe it will be. Uh, let's see. So, now what? Okay, so we should put code into our bubble sort method, right? So, what am I supposed to do? I'm looping through with the draw method already, right? You see that? So down here, I need to loop through the array. Oh, cool. I have code that looped through the array before, so I'm just going to snag that, right? So I'm looping through the array with numbers. Oh, and I said that I was going to do this with eyes in my pseudocode, so I'm going to make them eyes. Oops, wrong thing. Right here. How about that? Okay, so I'm supposed to loop through my array and do what? Okay, so I need if Let's see, if something, right? So if the card you're looking at, right, is bigger than the next card. Okay, yeah, so I need to go up and find out. I had a temporary storage thing, right? Uh, is that a global? No. Oh, it's right here. It's So that thing's declared in the selection sort step method. But I'm going to need that, right? So if I try to call that in here, if I say like temp equals a uh, 
oops, equals numbers uh, i, which I think is what I wanted to do according to my pseudocode. Uh, it's telling me the variable temp does not exist, even though the variable temp is declared right here. Why is it doing that? Yeah, so that variable belongs to that method, right? So I need to I need to either make that thing a global or declare it in here again and have it be a different thing. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to make it a global because I'm going to use it in a couple different spots. It's probably, that's probably marginal practice, right? Because the weird thing would be if you ran a selection sort step and then ran a bubble sort step later, it's possible that the temp might have been stored or something, right? You wouldn't want to accidentally use what was in there before. So you just want to make sure you write over the top of that thing before you before you start, basically. Right? So uh, I'm doing that anyway in here. So I'm just going to copy that same idea. So I'm going to take my declaration of my variable and bring it up to the top and paste it in here. You guys cool with that? So now my temp's a global variable. I probably should remove that. Cool. Now it's not yelling at me. Then what did I want to do? Okay, so I want to take my, yeah, the thing I just stored, right, and overwrite that spot with what's in the next spot. And then next, yep, I need to put what was, I need to take that now kind of empty, like I'm thinking, I'm making hand quotes, I'm thinking empty at that spot. It's not actually empty, right? It still has whatever it had in it. But I want to overwrite that with what's in the temp. Okay, so this bit of code, right, is really just switch elements. Right? And then what else do I want to... Ben was really on the ball about spotting this earlier. Uh, yeah, I could put this whole thing in a while statement. It's already in the draw loop. So I've got the outside loop can, uh, dealt with. Ben had another thing he was worried about. There's an out of bounds problem here. Do you guys see it? Like, where is it coming from? Yeah, when you get to the end of the array, right? And you try to call i plus 1, that ain't going to work for you. So how do you get around that? Perfect. Just subtract 1 from number sort length so that you're not comparing the last spot to the whoopsie-daisy off the end spot, right? Because there isn't one. Okay. So if I try this... I don't know what the hell happened to the green rectangle. Good question. Yeah. It's not going to stop. So, now, what's it doing in the background? It's cranking on processor power, right? It's just going to do this. You guys see that? Like, Every time it's running through that array and trying to bubble sort it, it's not doing any swaps, right? But it's running through that array. So that's the sorting step, right? Oh, right. But every time this goes through, it's calling that sort. Right. So it's like, yo, dude, run through the array. Like, every time it draws, it's, yo, dude, run through the array, then draw those... Actually... I'm lying to you right now, aren't I? In the draw method, right, it's, okay, wipe what was there, right? Then draw the rectangles, then go through and sort them. Right? Do one sorting step, so one pass. And then draw the background, draw the rectangles, then loop through and sort them for the next draw. You guys see that? 
The selections, so the selection sort step method is commented out, but it is doing this weird thing where step is less than numbers dot length. It's checking that every time. I was using that step thing as part of my selection sort method, right? You guys see that? So I've got a little bit of kind of antiquated code here because I did something kind of weird. You guys see that? Really what this thing needs is some kind of a menu at the front of it so I can select which method I want to sort by. Right. Thus far I have options built in for selection sort steps and bubble sort steps. And it should be noted that neither of those really, I guess this one will stop it, the selection sort. But the bubble sort step method is going to continue to try to sort it every single time. And that green rectangle got a little weird, right? So if I run this again, you'll see that that green rectangle just kind of chills. So it chills until it disappears for a second, right? Why is it gone? It's not actually gone. That rectangle there is just really, really short. Right, that's right here. So the, the rectangles, right? That's just coloring in the first rectangle green. You see that? So we could do something like in our bubble sort step, right? Every time it loops through here, we could do a step plus plus. Right? And now we'd see something really strange with our green rectangles. Right? That's telling me how many times have I looped through the array. Like how many bubble sort steps have I tried to do? Which is really bizarre. Uh, why did my bubble sort stop? Oh, I know why it's tied to the rectangle. Is it tied to the rectangle? Yeah, it's kind of tied to the rectangle in the way that the rectangle is made out of the step variable and there's an if statement about the step variable. You guys see that? That's right here. That really should be part of my selection sort. So I really should take that code, right? That if statement. I should take that out of here and put it in here. And then indent all of the selection sort method. So this is one of the good reasons for GitHub, right? You guys see why this would be a good reason to use GitHub? Because even though I wasn't really fiddling with the selection sort stuff, I ended up changing some of it, right? And I have an extra closing bracket. Oh, in the draw method. I do have an extra closing bracket. Thank you. This one was from the if statement. And these two guys are now indented more than they should have been. Okay. Now this is a weird this is a weird thing. What's this gonna do now? They're going to be fighting each other a little bit. It's going to go through and try it. Every, so at every pass, it's going to go through once with selection sort, and then it's going to go through once with bubble sort. Right? Let's run it and see what happens. Let's run it and see what happens. I'm totally with that. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> and then right about somewhere here, it's going to run out of selection sorts. Why is it not doing bubble sort at all now. <laughs> yeah, please. So go back in bubble sort, look at the for loop. In my bubble sort, look at the for loop. Bubble sort, for loop. Look at it for a little bit. Oh! <laughs> you guys see that? I snaked this from somewhere else, right? I snaked it from the selection sort step and I just totally wasn't paying attention. Right? That thing's not looping through the whole array unless the step is zero. It's just looping through the end of the array. So if I want to loop it through the whole array, where does that one need to start? It needs to start at zero. Okay, now this should work. It'll go through and do a bubble sort step and a selection sort step at each stage. Right? So I've invented now a new sort method, which I call the bubble selection sort. 
Which certainly works and probably isn't an improvement on either method. You guys see that? It probably takes basically the same amount of time as either method. Both those methods, by the way, take basically the same amount of time. You guys cool with that? What were you going to ask, Story? I was wondering if we could make a timer, like have it like once we start, it starts it, and once it's sorted, it stops it. And then also have like maybe a little chart that has processing calendar. Sure, that would be a good idea. So another thing we could add to this is a method that does like check for sorted, which you'll need to do if you're going to add a bongo sort, right? So how would you do a check for sorted? Yep. Yeah, that would work, right? We could keep track of the temp variable in a bubble sort. And whether we ever overwrite, like, did you write into the temp variable? That would be a totally reasonable method. Another method I could use is I could use basically the bubble sort idea, except it, instead of in here, right, switching elements, I could just have a Boolean in there. If it needs to switch elements, then it's not sorted. You guys see that? Like, that would be a totally reasonable method. You could use a selection sort to do the same thing. You could do an insertion sort to do the same thing. Probably bubble sort is the easiest way, right? Because you just go through and compare things. And if they're, all the pairs are in order, then the whole thing must be in order. But that wouldn't work for a bongo. Because you're so for a bongo, you'd have to do a reshuffle, check for sort, if, if not sorted, reshuffle check for sorted, right? So you'd be constantly calling back and forth between the two things. But I'm imagining is that it shuffles and then pretty much goes like, if, if this is true, so it goes through and checks the whole thing, and if it's true, then Boolean is false, or whatever, that's done. Yeah. If not, go again. Yeah. So it had to go through and check every single time. Yeah, so let's write the pseudocode for a bongo sort. I'm going to pause this. And